Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare pork collar and leeks from Anonimo Toscanos, Libro della Cucina, a cookbook written in the 14th century. We start with ingredients. We need pork collar, leeks, eggs and spices, black pepper, cloves, nutmeg and saffron. We mince the leek and stew it with the pork collar and a bit of lard, add in a little water and salt. The cooking time may change depending on the size of the meat, but we cooked it for about an hour and a half. The author doesn't specify which cut we should use, only that the leeks must be cooked with fresh meat, which will be minced after cooking and then served with pork meat or another meat. It is unclear whether it's the same meat that is cooked with the leeks or another meat. We chose to serve the leeks with the part of the meat that we didn't mince. But you are free to interpret this passage as you prefer. If you use another meat, you can boil or roast it according to your taste. Meanwhile, we grind a part of the pepper, steep the saffron in warm water and beat an egg. As is often the case with historical cuisine, it's difficult to put this dish into modern categories. In some aspects, it looks like a stew. In others, it seems more like a soup used to accompany meat. In any case, it can change considerably if you make it more brothy or if you use it as a side dish for roasted meat. This is one of the most interesting aspects of the cookbook we used for today's recipe. The fact that it offers plenty of possibilities for interpretation, while also providing variations and suggestions to experiment with the ingredients, spices and flavors. When the pork collar is cooked through, we slice it and mince one piece. Then we add the minced meat, saffron, pepper and egg to the leeks and cook for a couple of minutes, stirring all the time. Anonimo Toscanos, Libro della Cucina, in fact, is not only a cookbook, but above all a handbook for understanding the principles underlying medieval cuisine and the culinary ideas behind the preparation of the dishes, often linked to the dietary theories of the time. More than strict rules for the preparation of medieval dishes, in this source we find the suggestions and interpretations, with the constant instruction to follow our taste, to prepare a dish that can be perfectly satisfying for us and the people we cook for. Our translation of Anonimo Toscano's Libro della Cucina, complete with an introduction to the ingredients and basic preparations, a commentary and a glossary, is available on Amazon. As are two other translations of medieval sources, Antimus de Observazione Ciborum and Johannes Bockenheim's Registrum Coquine. To learn more about the use of vegetables in historical cuisine, check out early Italian recipes, vegetables, fruit, herbs and flowers. The first book in a series dedicated to specific ingredients in Italian cuisine, recently followed by a volume about cereals. A list of our books on historical cuisine is available in the description below followed by the links to buy our merchandise and support us on Patreon, where you can find several articles on historical food and translations of ancient and medieval sources. We grind the pepper, cloves and nutmeg. The author only writes to use spices, in addition to those is already mentioned in the text, which are pepper and saffron. Choose among those found in medieval cookbooks, such as cinnamon, ginger, grains of paradise, Indian bell leaves, and the ones we used. We serve the leeks with slices of pork collar, dusting with spices. This dish was simple and amazing. With the sweet taste of the leeks, 
perfectly balanced by the spices and enriched by the minced meat and eggs, which gave it a nice texture. A dish that is very easy to prepare and that offers us a delicious way to better understand the complex and varied culinary culture of the Middle Ages. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.